Hello everyone, my name is Reese from Waypoint and in this video we're going to have a look at the new Deer production module which is currently in beta. Now one thing to know about this new module is Deer have been working on this for some time and we're so happy that it's now out in the public and that more eyes are getting on this. It is an enormous module and it's only going to get bigger. What we're currently seeing in the beta is the first portion of a larger production module. Uh, what will be coming later is the scheduling component, which enables you to actually put in complex production and also see when it will fit based off capacity um, throughout the week, month, year, um, enabling you to do some really, really, really good uh, resource planning. Now, before we get stuck right into things, let's talk about where the production module is useful useful for some and where the standard um, assembly orders um, and build, standard bill of materials uh, we've been using for many years in Deer will be fine for most other users. The production module is designed really as a resource management tool. It enables you to do multi-stage production in an incredibly seamless way and enabling you to see the many different stages of a complex um, production of your products without having to actually do many disconnected assemblies as used to be the process last week. Now, in setting up the production module, you're required to actually set up quite a lot of complex um, settings and they can be a little bit intimidating at first. There are support um, articles on Deer's website and we are already working towards assisting our, our clients with making the move to the production module at this stage. Um, in general, Waypoint has been hard at work this week, getting familiar with the settings and putting it through its paces, testing um, parameters and really trying to adapt it to many different um, types of productions that we encounter with our clients. So let's get started. The first thing to note is you'll find pretty much everything you need in the production area here, including the settings. Everything related to the production order is marked with beta, so you know that this is still a working pro um, process, uh, progress I should say. And it's very important that if you encounter any issues, if you have any questions, you're relaying them to dear support to ensure that they can improve and lock this down for general release. So if we're going to settings, you'll notice there's quite a few different areas that need to be set up before you can even really do anything in the system. The first thing is um, a factory calendar. This enables you to take your, uh, your sh shop floor location or your production location and set your standard operating hours by calendar settings here, including breaks. It enables you to set your standard holidays um, so that it can calculate the days that are standardly uh, standard and not available. And then you also have custom working hours, which can be bespoke days where they do differ um, from the standard um, week to week operating hours. Now you can set all this up um, and pretty much have your whole uh, year ahead of you sorted. This is really going to be um, utilized in the scheduling module, which is coming um, soon, which will enable your production orders to interact um, on a timeline and you can see pressures of resourcing. Now, you don't have to get too granular here. For instance, if you do have certain machines or certain processes that can only be conducted during certain hours, for instance, you'll actually be setting those working um, hours and conditions on the resource itself and you won't have to actually create um, very bespoke settings here on your general um, factory calendar. So going back to the settings, you then also have resources, which are things such as labor and um, anything that is a um, service, but it also can be certain machines or certain tools that are used. Setting these up enables you to um, say how many you have and also select their capacity. This enables you to, um, on the um, coming soon scheduling, know how many of these operations can run at any one time. For instance, here in this example, I have a brewing facility I've um, replicated where I have a fermentation vessel that is currently in operational status. It, we, ha we have three of these. 
They operate within standard um, business hours that I've set in my factory calendar, but I could say, for instance, if these could only be, say, utilized in the afternoon, I could be setting these um, in the custom operational hours here. And I can also select dates, uh, ranges, where this may not be operational for, say, down for maintenance or anything like that. You'll also be able to select how many of these um, you have, and that will then provide a um, outcome of the hours of use open to you per, uh, per, per week. You can then attach to this things such as your costs. This could be labor components. It could be um, R&D costs. It could be other things that will impact. And you can have that impacting at particular intervals um, to, to calculate the true cost of utilization of that particular machine or person. Um, so th th that is appropriately costed when you're doing these large um, production orders. You can also make attachments to these for, say, instructionals when using this particular resource, uh, imagery, whatever you'd like. And you can also leave remarks, comments on certain things. Um, you might use this to, to note on, say, certain labor costs, noting that they might be revised on X day. Um, but this is just a little conversational thing where you could be going here, um, expected to get another vessel in late 2020. Boom. Adds that there with the um, name associated to it and the date that is done. Lots of other finer details here that I don't want to jump into um, right now as it opens up a whole world of complexity, um, such as how your capacity works, how resources are consumed. Um, one little simple one here is infinite resources, a great opportunity to do things such as water where you might have unlimited. Um, that means that there is no kind of, uh, nobody turning off the tap. Going back to the settings, Beyond resources, you'll also have work centers. So these are the particular areas um, in your production um, location that are being um, utilized. Now resources can be utilized within these particular um, work centers and these take up a portion or have access to particular bins in that location. Um, it's a fairly complex pr um, process, but if you think of this um, more so as far as your production areas and if you do want to subdivide this you may have a very simple um, area where it is only a single one of these works um, centers but this does actually enable you to have more of that movement um, between these areas in your production location um, on the note of production locations do be aware that you now have a new option in your reference books when setting up locations this is related to this, um, this module and is required to be set up beforehand in locations and bins. You're now, now able to designate on a location if it is a shop floor. That terminology um, is saying workshop floor, production floor, etc. Not as in retail shop floor. Also, when modifying the bins for these particular um, locations, you'll also be able to attach these storage um, bins to particular work centers that they're being utilized in. Another area here is um, logistics path, which just shows that um, your goods are generally stored in the warehouse and they're transferred to the shop floor and this is what's used for retail. You can create um, these specific logic flows so the system can do more things such as um, raising stock transfers automatically for you when you're creating a production moving it from your warehouse into your shop floor for instance um, it's a fairly um, complex little area though it looks quite simple here um, and um, if you're having any trouble with setting up anything like this feel free to let us know now going back um, here to the uh, production module itself once you've set up these particular areas, it's about setting up your products you want to use in the production module. So ensuring that you have your work centers, your resources, your calendar, your locations, your bins, and your, your uh, logistic um, path set up. When you go to one of your products you want to set up for productions, I'm going to quickly find one that I prepared earlier.
So here's a product that I did set up earlier. It's a pale ale bottle. So this is the production of pretty much brewing one unit of these beers. So one thing to notice is in the bill of materials, we have a production bill of material currently set. We also have the assembly bill of material. The assembly bill of material is the bill of materials you've been applying for many years now in Deer. The production bill of materials is what you need to use if you want these to be production order, order products. Going down here to the production bill of material, the quantity to produce works in the same way um, as it had with the assembly um, bill of materials, enabling you to say this recipe below, all the components of this make 1000 units on a good day. In assembly instructions URL enables you to have a link to a document or a file um, that helps you understand the, the assembly process. Understanding now that you can attach um, lots of these uh, attachments and notes, etc., either to the resources or even in the operation itself, does make this somewhat redundant, but it's great to have it there. The buffer percentage is going to be used in the um, scheduling module when that is introduced soon. This enables you to say, hey, this might take X amount of days, but I want to make sure that if I set a deadline of this needing to be done by the 30th, that we maybe factor in 10% of, of the total work time um, as a buffer to ensure that it is indeed finished um, at that required by date and that there is no risk there of if things do take a little bit longer, you've factored in um, that buffer to be safe. I'm going to remove that for now. So then what you'll be doing is you'll be creating operations. Now operations, as you see here, are individual um, sequences that happen and this creates each individual step in the process. So we have components which are inventory items. We see here in the first step of mashing, so making the mash for the, um, for the, the beer. We're mashing some barley grain um, which is using a uh, mash uh, ton here. We're using water, we're using labor and we're designating how many of these are used per cycle. And in this instance, the cycle of this operation is a two hour cycle. It uses the work center here, the mash ton room, and it's calculating an ex, um, a estimation of cost. Now you can add items to these quite simply. You have components, resources. Something not included here is notes, which are limited to 256 characters. So you'll need to do this. And you're also able to add attachments right here within the, the operation itself, which is fantastic. And one of the reasons why the um, overall URL to the instructions is not as required any longer. Another thing to be aware of is as you create these, if you have um, any of these production bill of materials that are similar, you can uh, copy these and clone them from other bill of materials so you can start um, working on new products from a base um, already existing. You can rename the operation stages yourself and you can also reorder um, the sequence noting that if you did want to have processes occurring um, concurrently if you make that the same um, sequence they will be open at the same stage. So you can do things simultaneously if your process dictates that. So each one of these is set with their own individual cycle and their expectation of um, how many resources they're consuming from that cycle um, and what's the outcome to eventually creating the thousand bottles there in the plan. And you'll notice some of these have variable um, times with two hours, one hour, 14 days for fermentation and two hours for the bottling bot to do its work. So some pretty complex stuff and there really is no end to the many different operations you can create. And once you have created these complex multi-stage bill of materials, you're able to actually create a um, production order itself. So if I go here into production and I create a production order, there are some similarities here to um, creating an assembly order. But in a few moments, we'll talk through the basics um, of this particular function, some things to be aware of. We won't be going through every single one of these, but just to be aware of the general process um, moving forward. Okay, so here we are in the new production order here. 
Um, we have the standard options here where we select the individual product we're wanting to um, produce. So I have here the parallel bottle. We're designating the shop floor. In this instance, uh, my particular example only has the one production facility. We can also do our individual mapping of where we want the finished good um, accounts to go to and where we're currently holding the uh, work in progress value as well. We have the same methods of going um, here with the quantity you wish to produce, being able to run a calculation using that bill of material to show you how many you can produce and um, looking at your current components. We then also have our capacity calculation. A lot of these here will really be utilized um, more heavily in the, the scheduling module that's coming soon. But this enables you to put in a plan date. So I want to either start production on this on the Monday. So it is calculating capacity from this date onwards. So if it's a um, two week process, it will calculate here from that date. Alternatively, you can go from required date backwards. Depending on your business process, this en enables you to actually select, well, we need this by the 29th, fit this into the capacity and schedule to meet that particular deadline. So whatever your business process is, if you want to ensure that you have everything produced as quickly as possible, or you want to ensure that you don't have things sitting around um, in storage waiting for client collection, you can actually manipulate this based on your process. There's other things such as release date, um, which will be populated automatically by the system, but you can designate this date. This is when um, the actual components will be released um, from your stand warehouse into your production facility. Um, this will be pre-populated as well. And you have some fields that are pretty much just system-based dates that you cannot interact with. These are grayed out. Your standard comments here, and then we have our production order. When we load our bill of material, it loads that um, full um, bill of material created in that product earlier, giving us a breakdown here. We notice that everything is currently um, highlighted blue in this production order. If we had any stock that was unavailable, um, these would be marked as red and you could actually see that. There are also settings created uh, in the general settings for production order, which enables um, any missing stock here to either automatically create a stock transfer if it is available in other um, locations in your, your DEER system, or even create a purchase order automatically for you to send to the supplier and get that stock to meet this production demand. So once this is loaded, we can either hit save with the checkbox or hit authorize to enact this order. So now what we actually have is the option here of releasing goods. Now releasing the goods will actually create a um, stock transfer in this instance from that main location. We see here that this is now being created. I'm just gonna open this another page because I don't believe I have this um, received. So let me just open up this here. So here we have that stock transfer, fantastic. I'm gonna make that received today. So it's gonna go into the product. And make sure all the stock I need for this has been moved over to my production facility. Fantastic. Coming back to my production order, but, um, what, we, uh, what I want to point out here is we have some overview information. We have the order page, which we've already seen. We have any transactional impact. This will be populated as you complete production runs. More of that in a moment. We have related orders. In this instance, it's showing us that one stock transfer because I had the stock um, of all the goods, how many of these were here. If you um, were required to create a purchase order related to this, and you had it set to automatically create those purchase orders, this is where you'd see the same thing for a purchase order as well. Any attached files, um, as well as an activity log showing all the movements, um, who's who in the zoo and who did what. So now we're good to go, we can create a production run. Production runs and essentially enable you to have many different passes if you wanted to, to produce the full um, quantity to produce. Now we selected a thousand units, I had a production run, which is our first production run. I could have this be one production run completes the full quantity, or I could have multiple runs that they're creating smaller batches um, to eventually complete the 1,000 units required. So if I hit this here for, um, uh, for the 500, I've got one production run currently in progress. So 
Quantity to produce is 500, work in progress account, etc. And now we have all our different um, operational sequences, mashing, boiling, fermenting, and bottling. And what we're doing here is we're hitting start. Hitting this updates this in real time as far as when the start date was. And you can also um, select a manual completion date. So if you're doing this retrospectively, it's a few days past and you wanted to change this, you can. Otherwise, if you just hit complete uh, without this, it will populate with whatever the date you hit complete is. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to auto pick, which just grabs my barley here. I could be designating certain batches if I required and confirming everything. I can go in here and change the quantities of things that have been consumed in the process of this but largely hitting complete, completes the mashing um, stage. And now I can go into boiling, start this, etc., and move on until eventually this production run is complete. And I'm able to put away these items, essentially creating those 500 bottles. So I'm just gonna quickly um, move through these now and um, I'll show you the next little stages of this. Okay, with the final stage here of bottling complete. This production run has now actually been completed, which is fantastic. If I look back here to the um, production order in general, we'll now see a transactional impact of those particular costs. And we'll also see, whoop, well, I was hoping to see a little bit more in that activity log, but um, we should have actually seen a little bit more here as those are complete. Now in the put away, what I can do here is I can copy everything from this production order. So it knows that 500 of these were produced. I'm just gonna select that these are released um, today. Um, Uh, noting that you can actually change the shop floor location of these as well, but now we've created um, those products. You can also load in manual journals against these, so third-party accrued expenses. You can apply here via manual journals if required, and we can see that the individual transactional impact of the individual produ um, production run itself. Now, if we were only ever gonna be producing those 500 um, units, we're not gonna produce the remaining 500, I can actually manually mark this as complete which then removes the expectation the additional 500 products are going to be created. One last thing in the production module here, we also have the ability of looking at our production modules in the search or list area, which shows all our um, production runs, it shows what has been completed, what is in progress. It enables you to filter by things such as um, production facilities, enables you to actually filter by even some custom dates or some um, presets based on required dates, and also filter by status um, of the production orders and search. That in a nutshell is an overview of the production model as it currently stands. Um, hold tight for the um, scheduling component, which will be coming soon. And we hope to do a, a video on that um, at its introduction as well. It's a very, very large and very, very daunting um, function, but it's going to offer so much functionality to so many um, of our clients and the many dear clients out there. If you have any questions or require assistance with this, feel free to reach out to us here at Waypoint. Um, this is our bread and butter and we'd love to help you. Take care.